Nation from San Jose, California, introducing Kong Lee. All right. So what's going on? We're Kung Lee, and we're talking Kung. Thank you so much for doing this. Sancho Master, I uh, appreciate it. Another East Side born and bred. San Jose, East San Side, Jose. baby. <laughs> where, where did you go to uh, to middle school, uh, Kung? I know you, I heard something about behind James Lake. What's the, what's the, the story originally? Actually, I went to middle school at Peter Burnett. Peter Burnett. Is, um, like downtown by Japanese town. Ah, okay, okay. And uh, then I went to San Jose High School. Okay. Which they call it San Jose Academy. Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Pala. I went to Pala. Pala became Escuela Popular <laughs> Academy now. And then what was the uh, journey? And again, we're going to give value, but we'll, we'll do a quick thing uh, with you. So from Peter Burnett, you go over to uh, what high school is Independence? No, uh, from Peter Burnett. Um, I went over to San Jose High Academy. Correct. Yep. And then uh, from San Jose High Academy, I went to West Valley College. And this is this just all focused on the wrestling. Right? Okay. Uh, Peter Burnett's where I started freestyle. They didn't have a, a middle school team. Right. So I just wrestled for the Mosquito Club. Which is, uh, <laughs> um, the coaches there was um, from um, Carlos. I can't remember his last name. Uh-huh. And uh, he was the coach at the school there and we just went to regular freestyle tournaments and then uh, then i i became part of the mosquito club which was a like a youth club okay wrestling team and then then later on um, i met um, uh, anthony palomino and rick palomino and then started wrestling um now what was san jose high like i remember brogan saying something about a state champ maybe he was talking about west valley junior college yeah yeah state um champ. i was the only uh, student from san jose to uh, place in the state um, right. as a junior. Uh, I got upset at, as a senior. I just cut too much weight and didn't do it properly and uh, rolled my ankle pretty bad and just never recovered. But uh, made it to state, just didn't do too well at state. and um, didn't, do, didn't do well at CCS either. I took third when I was ranked number one or two in state all year long. So, um, you know, things happen and now I can take those mistakes and hopefully teach my, my sons um, to cut weight right and um, and uh, have a better uh, wrestling season instead of thinking about cutting the weight but just enjoying it, doing it naturally. And now they have that weight cut stuff. You know, Coach, we were just talking about Coach that, yeah. Sam was telling me that you know, they have to do this to make sure that um, the they kids, cut weight properly, right? the kids don't you know, kill themselves. So who came up to you first? From what you can remember, who first said – we got Coach Sam Swinger sitting back here who, who convinced me to wrestle. Uh, do, you, do you remember like what would cross your mind first and some coach said, hey, maybe – usually it's like a teacher in class or something like that, right? Uh, you know, yeah. believe it or not, um, it, it, was, it was just funny. I saw um, Coach Carlos uh, was my first wrestling coach. He was walking up to the room and I – I saw some shoes uh, hanging off his bag, and one of the wrestling shoes fell off. And I that was the up, thing, huh? Up Wrestlers said, with the backpacks. Hey, uh, um, you, 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 you dropped your shoe, you dropped sir. Your shoe, and he's all, oh, thank you. He's all, come, come up and check, check out wrestling. I'm all, oh, okay. So I went up. I sat there, and I didn't have anything. I was in jeans, and I said, hey, can I wrestle? And I jumped in there and started wrestling, and got a kid in head and arm, but not not a head and arm. A natural head. headlock, just a headlock. <laughs> Uh, and he's all, you got to get the arm in there. And then I shot first day. I was like throwing everyone in the head, head, headlock. And then I grabbed the arm after and then start throwing head and arms. I think from there was, uh, was the addiction process yeah. started. Cause I was like, Oh, contact. I need more wrestling. So I came back the next day with, with workout clothes instead of my jeans. And I started working out and next thing I know, I went to, um, uh, tournaments. That's awesome. And then you caught the bug after that, right? Got the bug. Um, what about uh, bull- bullying, Coach? We're in the East. It's not the nicest part of town. All some pallet again, shaving cream, all that stuff. Any <laughs> <laughs> bullying? Well, it started, you know, very at a very young age. Because when I came over here, um, you know, uh, I couldn't speak English the best right away, <laughs> right? Normal. I couldn't speak English at all. Oh wow! But then when I got to um, elementary school, um, a lot of kids 
at that time still didn't understand why there was a whole bunch of Asians in school and um, where I went it was like a like a Empire Gardens mm. over in the Jap- Japan town you're saying Burnett, close, Peter close to that area uh, uh, Empire Gardens was the elementary school Got it. Um, but from there I just I just remember you know uh, this kid named Domingo. Oh, call he, out and, and dropping he, names. And he wasn't Domingo even sitting there white. Right now right? He wasn't even <laughs> white. Um, and he was just picking on me because I think you know society has you know what what's the cool thing to do. So the kids go and you know see another kid bully, and then that kid's popular, and then and then it's Could like a agree. trickle effect, right? So he or what's going on at home with their pops or whatever they're getting bullied on, so they they go and they bully on other. People, who knows, right? Yeah. It's obviously not the best. So thing from to that, do. that just uh, um, you know, uh, getting bullied every day, and finally I decided to uh, wrestling helps a little bit. Uh, well, I, I didn't wrestle yet, but I, I just decided to fight back. And even though I got my face bloodied, I, I was the first one to throw the punch. I didn't care. I was like, okay, right. let's just fight. All right. Hit him, hit him in the nose, and then never mess with you again. That was, that was my dad's parenting, right? He's like, don't don't let that kid mess with you. Punch him in the nose, and I promise I'll never mess with you. Again, I look back. I'm like, is that was that the right child advice or not? I don't know. Well, go tell the teacher. Well, do this. The, the difference is, I only the had bullies a mom. will stop. It's true. I only had a mom, oh, so okay, okay. Um, my mom didn't know. So I didn't know. My dad didn't. Uh, my dad wasn't involved. You know. Well, mama. Well, mama mom. don't know. Won't hurt her. So uh, basically, uh, um, I just do a punch and ran to the office. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Let's see. Um, Marco, he just had a similar story to everything you just said. Uh, I'm just curious, and Dr. Marco Sanchez, you've had him on the show to check out that ap- episode. Uh, you mentioned uh, he helped you a lot. A little shout out to Marco. When did you come across uh, him? Was that the Mosquito Club, Shepherd, Meet San Jose High, or did you see West Valley? No, no, uh, Marco Sanchez, uh, he was a big inspiration when I was coming up in wrestling. Uh, I, I believe it was in. Um, uh, in high school okay and um like our freestyle club and i heard about battling 76ers so i i, I wanted to get more wrestling independence in. for those who don't you know, know i wanted to get more wrestling in and then uh, ended up uh ended up going to uh, independence and, and wrestling over there and joined the freestyle team the battling 76ers over there it's the summer stuff yeah. right and then and, and marco sanchez was uh you know he was there and his work ethics and everything i was like there like, damn, yeah. this is what I got to do. Getting tossed around by him. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think he remembers me because uh, he beat me up really good, but I, I wouldn't stop. I keep I'm, I'm going to throw in that picture right now when I edit this uh, yeah. video, but iron sharpens iron, right? That's uh, – um, all right, this is a tough one. Some of the off-the-mat attributes of wrestling and, and sports in general. I said it's so hard to put into words and explain, but to any kids like – listening out there and coach Spangler is here too it's such a tough question to answer but the discipline work ethic there's so many off the mat stuff that, that will help kids uh in general what do you think wrestling does obviously you have your your your, your sons in wrestling because you want to pass that on uh to them as well but i literally want to write a book about, about this uh, and you can say martial arts too there's so many ways i think Sportsmanship, for example, guy kicked your ass, shaking his hand after, and just saying, "You got me. I got you next time." For some people that aren't in sports, they can't deal with a loss, yeah. like that they hold grudges and stuff, right? What do you feel off the mat that you think wrestling would really help kids with? You know, tough. It's a tough question. Isn't it? it's not, actually, for me, wrestling was my glue uh, when I was growing up because. I like the hard work. I like the technical part of wrestling, and it's a one-on-one sport. So you really don't have a team to blame. You can, you lose, you you blame yourself, or you learn, right? So that for me, and the workouts were crazy, and I believe the workouts were harder than any other workout because one thing about there's track, right? You run, you sprint, you jump, you shot put, or whatever mm-hmm. you throw the javelin. But you're you're stuck just doing that all the time. In wrestling, you have to do sprints, you have to do bleachers, you have to do dog crawls. Mm. I mean, you name it, we do it. Except throwing the shot shot put or the javelin. 
right? We don't do that. But we're definitely snapping the head. It's just the same motion as throwing a javelin. We're shooting in. I mean, football and, players. And it's not a team sport. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, so. it's all on me. It's all on whether you. Whether I lose, it's all on me. Whether I win, it's all on me. But at least I'm in control. Yep. Right? It's not because of my teammates. That's one thing yeah. that, I, that I loved about it. Uh, ush. Ush. Uh, ush. Unlimited ush. strength and honor. Oh, That's I didn't ush. know that. Yeah. That's ush. Yep. And so get an acronym and then how much more beautiful. That's actually the sound you're making when you're clapping heads. Ush. Yeah. Ush. Constantly. Yeah. Or, did you, or came Unleash with Hell. I, did. Unleash. I, I came up with ush. You know. You came up with ush. Yeah. Because, you know, karate, they go ush with the O-S-H. So yes. I just turned the O into the U. And I had, you know, and the S and H was already there. And, you know, whatever else came behind it, you know, the team. Uh, uh, Coach Sam here was uh, one of my fighters. He turned pro under me. and he Pop was, up Sam. He was a beast. And and everything was about the Ush fight team. Dragon House yeah. champ. Yeah. Dragon House champ. We were just talking about that. Um, what happened next at West Valley? I remember I was watching all the old school San Chao videos. Beautiful, beautiful throws. Um, but I'm sure you hit a transition there. Well, first off. The wrestling uh, pro probably ended two years. JC, did you place anywhere? Junior college? Uh, in junior college at West Valley uh, uh, Junior College, I was uh, uh, as a junior college state champion as a freshman. And again, wow. as a sophomore, um, I ended up taking second. But this time, no excuses. I just uh, overlooked my opponent and got caught on my back and pinned. And, then, uh, and you know, he went on to... Uh, get into the finals uh, but I beat him uh, three weeks before some guy I can't remember his first name but last name was Davis mm -hmm. and um, you know I, I beat him because that's why I overlooked him I already beat him mm -hmm. and it was uh, just a very tactical match and I, I I don't know what I try to do I think it was a lateral drop and he got he caught me on my back and mm -hmm. I you know and it was a, a fast pin and that was it and I fought my way back to uh, get third at, at state so yeah. so so it's over over one now you're like Shit. where am i where am i going what, what the hell am i gonna do there's sancha you take off anywhere you travel i became a travel agent not because <laughs> oh, I, first job not because i wanted to but my mom's you travel got, agent you gotta start was somewhere not doing too well because the worker that she had in there was you know, slacking off so i went in and i uh started know, working a little bit started working and you know American travel planners, Kung Lee speaking. How can I help you? <laughs> right. What destination would you like to go? Right, so, right. And then, um, and then, um, then you probably got sick of that. After athletics wise, then the you, itch came to con like have contact. Totally normal. And um, went back to my old Taekwondo teacher and started up there. And uh, um, you know, is that what led you into competitive uh, San Shao? Well, you know, I was getting disqualified at the bigger tournaments for Taekwondo. And uh, you know excessive force, drawing blood. So I just got scissor tired of it. Kicks, no. And no, I did. I couldn't do scissor You're not kick allowed there. To do scissor kicks. But then um, there was uh, a tournament, uh, the U.S. Open, and uh, you know I, I I sent out an application. And Taekwondo U.S. Open. No, no, it was a U.S. Open Sancho. Sanda Sancho. Oh, Sanda. But back then it was Sancho because the amateur. Then Sanda was the pro. And I went out there and I um, entered in into um, the 175 division, won, won that division, and then. Um, um, the promoter says, "Hey, you want to fight for a grand grand champion title against the guy at the weight at the weight above?" And I'm all uh, sure. So I went up there, and you know, um, was, that, the, was that was that Nashun? No, no, Nashun. not yet. Not I watched Nashun last night. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but crazy. then you know, I got a, my first scissor kick knockout because I hit him with the in the rib with it. Right. And then, uh, you know, I, I took him down. I got up, back up. And I was like, and this guy's, uh, you know, man, it's tough. I look back and he didn't get off the mat. I'm like, guess he's not that tough. So, um, so, so for people who don't know, just in a few words, Sanchao, what are the basic uh, rules? So, Sanchao kickboxing, but you are allowed. Takedowns. And this is like boxing, kicking low, middle, high. You can catch the kicks and you can take them down. You can go for the takedown. The points are if you take them down, you go and you land on top of him. It's one point. You take him down and you, uh, you know, if it's a big throw and you still land on top of him, you get two points. If you pick him up over your head and slam him down, that's three points. Oh, because points yeah. system. So awesome, awesome. So throws are allowed, right? But you you cannot hit a grounded uh, opponent, correct? No. Okay. Let's see. Persistence. Would you agree that's the only universal skill? 
that matters, be it life, be it MMA, be it acting, um, actor and, and writer uh, as well. And if we were talking, you know, to your grandkids right now, how would you, you know, put it or your great grandkids one day? So many people out there probably, you know, trying to struggle, find their place, find what they want to do. Would you encourage them? Would you say that that's one characteristic? Oh, wrestling obviously teaches it, right? Incredibly. Um, or adaptation. What do you think? What do you I think would have to it? say strong mindset. You have a strong mindset, meaning you won't quit. And when you don't quit, you have to learn. And if you don't know something and you – nowadays you have Google. You, those, you get on Google. You look it up. You study it, whether it's someone writing an article a blog or you there's a video on youtube mm -hmm. i mean the tools sky, are incredible the sky's the limit now so versus 1999 Google. yeah absolutely um bruce bruce was my mom's singapore she remembers uh bruce lee um we, we were some of the the heroes grew up anybody who had an influence somebody like bruce who's essentially done what you've done with martial martial arts transitioned into hollywood and acting we'll get to all that um, hey, Bruce Lee, you have any influence on you growing up? Bruce Lee actually did have an influence, but my first influence was because my mom and my grandfather was very religious, and uh, the faith in God uh, kind of led me to watching like martial arts movie and showing, like making me understand, man, you know, this is someone who has presence in some martial arts. And then I studied up on martial arts and it was all about discipline mm -hmm. and uh, self-control and consistency. And uh, from there, he was kind of the gateway, Bruce Lee, but God, God is the main, main influence in life. Right. Faith, faith in yourself and God first. Right. Um, so what about teams? Like, People talk about iron sharpens iron. You get the loyalty team that people try to say when people venture out to other camps. So we're transitioning now to aspiring pro fighter uh, one on one to those who are interested um, out there. It's kind of a, a stigma, right? Sometimes with uh, Connors, I'm loyal to my team. I don't go to other teams. But the reality is, right, you got to test the waters at other places like you did with Marco in that example in the summers. Right, iron sharpens iron. Um, you think obviously that's BS, or people you know, should, you know stay loyal to the team, but also you got to go out there and get other looks from other people, even if it means going to other country. What are your thoughts on that, too? For any uh, people who have, who have their thoughts, uh... for for me, I'm all about loyalty. Right, um, but it's a tough you know, one, right? It's a balance. Once in a while, it's good to go out and get a different look but if there's good coaches in the camp I, I feel like your team you don't really you don't really need to go out it, right. it's all about your partners right if the partners that competition is going out well, right well, yeah, you test yourself that yeah, way yeah but if when you're go, going up as amateur mm. it's good to you know fight in the tournaments and you know even pay for your way and then that's what like like even Co coach sam we were we did a lot we did tons of tournaments we 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 traveled even coach sam went to the u.s team trials and he was the alternate and was the alternate after like like a year and a half of training under me right and then like he he fought the guy who was like the top guy who's been there for years and years and barely lost to him and it lost him on experience but you know that alone just shows that um, it's not about what camp. Um, mm -hmm. It's about your training partners and it's about your coaching. Um, mm -hmm. You you can have um, the best coach at the camp, and and then that that and and the coach doesn't have a lot of talent, but all those talent will grow together. Right. And, I and think once that's you what grow, did, you, know? you don't forget about who brought yeah. you there. You know yeah. who made you. Right. What are thoughts, coach, on game planning and strategy before? Uh, fights. You know, some people feel that it's important, but some people say, "Focus." I'm not going to focus on what he's going to do. I'm going to focus on what I'm going to do. I was talking to, talking to Coach Sam before this. Um, that some shouldn't. Yeah, don't worry about what they're going to do. Do worry about what, what you're going to do. But in in some cases, is it very important, or where, where do you see that in your in your opinion? Again, these aren't facts; just personal opinions, right? Actually, um, Coach Sam is right right on the butt, right? Because if you're too busy thinking about what they're gonna do, right. you're gonna be delayed on your reaction and your timing on what you're gonna do, right? right? At least know what they're gonna do, and 
be prepared for what they got, but always be on the offense. If, if you're if you're wrestling or fighting defensively, you're just looking for what they're 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 gonna attack you with, and then then you, you start to hesitate from yeah. your game. So actually, Coach Sam is dead on right there. Don't worry about what they do because they're too busy worrying about what you got. And the, I think Co- Coach Sam and, and like my style is that in your face and pressure, pressure, pressure. And I think that kind of style beats a lot of a lot of fighters where they're they're really technical. And it's always in the first round, whether how skilled they are right. it doesn't matter they can look really skilled but if you wear them down once someone is tired mm-hmm. it's like you know it, you break the them. game is even and when they gas you you control you own them I punch some bunches and setting up kicks before throwing I just put what drives you crazy when watching sometimes right uh, people are throwing huge right punches and you just wish they would throw through the time is, is what would you say it's something when you're watching where you're just pulling your hairs out. And again, I'm like below a white blood. I have zero experience. Let me give that disclaimer right there. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm just here trying to pull value out of this really. Uh, what's one thing you see often? You see with novice fighters or, um, for example, just like what I mentioned. For me, you know, as a fighter from an amateur level to a professional level, then a coaching from amateur fighters to coaching professional fighters. What I see is that a lot of fighters don't fight to their potential. And that reason is not because of anyone else, but the fighters, because in their head, Mm. they're holding themselves back. And there's two ways that you can look at it. It's in their head or the coach overtrained them or they don't know when to stop and they they don't consider recovery right if it if they can't recover and they go into um the match flat that means they're not going to perform at their best so it's all about you know whether like we talked about it today coach uh, sam says i'm not going to give them any time off but the I, time, I thought of that right now the, the time that he's gonna give them off is actually how he is uh, strategizing this. This is a brilliant way. He says, I'm going to have them drill light because if they're doing it every day, whether it's super light, it becomes natural reaction when it comes to a full on match, which is great. Me, I like because wrestling, you don't, you're not getting hit and elbowed and knee and taken down. So with, when fighting, sometimes the body, you need complete a day off and you can tell them instead of drilling, you can think about it, visualize it. But in wrestling, I believe if because I did, I never gave myself a day off. There's a the point I, of diminishing. I wish returns. I could have right, right, uh, right. Uh, go back and given myself three, four days off looking before back. a match because I used to kill myself in wrestling. I used to do double practice. I used to go to my high school practice, then bike over to Independence and do their freestyle practice. I mean, it was nonstop for me, and and I I, I never wrestled at my best because I was always burnt out. So sleep and recovery is yeah. kind of underrated, right? Yeah. In that way, you're looking at okay, shorter. Uh, by understanding fighting, closing the distance, uh, is this an art? Now we're talking about martial arts. Is this an art that you feel is learned with time? You see, Stephen Thompson. Some of them are so good at getting in and out. And then two part question: uh, advantages when you look at guys that tight like Tyson, right? They're they're so much shorter, but they're so good at getting inside. Uh, as someone who wasn't as, as tall, please don't kill me. I'm, I'm six four. He's he's still a good looking dude. Okay, uh, would you what would you you take uh, that as? Uh, often in martial arts, you might have opponents who are much taller than you, right? Um, not necessarily a disadvantage, right? Just understanding yourself. Um, how how would you would you use that if someone you know just some, some more fighters out there that aren't as tall? Well. It all comes down to whether it's wrestling or fighting, um, any kind of contact, uh, you know, um, sport. Um, it, it comes down to how much you have practiced your moves, right? Just like what Bruce Lee says, you know, don't fear the guy who practiced ten thousand moves or or or, or yeah, the yeah, guy who does ten thousand moves. The once. guy who does ten thousand moves once. Right, um, right, right. So about distance and and everything. If you have your set of moves. Your skill set, you know about your skill set. For me, at a high level, and I always tell my uh, students uh, and, and fighters when they're the amateur or pro, I always tell them, look, if you see something open, hit it. 
If you see something coming, defend against it. Hit what's open, defend what's coming. Yeah. Excuse, excuse me, one move 10,000 times. If you're the guy who does one move 10,000 yeah. times, uh, kind of a, uh, let's see, most effective stand-up, that, that debate, right? Uh, in unarmed combat, in your opinion, uh, a controversial tough question, right? Remember this whole early use of wrestler versus boxer? But if we were talking just stand-up, in your opinion, uh, we feel is the most effective art debated by thousands, right? It's your opinion. Here's here's my opinion. That. <laughs> the most effective art, just like a lot of people ask me, what's the best martial arts? What style is the best? Controversial well, question. it's not the style. It's the mm. person behind the style. Because the if that person uses that style but takes other styles because it's effective for him, then that's the best style. It's you. You are that person who makes the style or when you learn an art, mm -hmm. when Coach Sam teaches you wrestling, you're not wrestling like Coach Sam. You're wrestling like you. You're making so it your it own. it becomes your own style. Right, right. Great answer. Great answer. Best non-martial arts, sports or activities, uh, creative like Smash, they're offering parkour. Now, GSP, we did a little gymnastics. Uh, what would you – I've got handball in there. Sometimes we see – what would you say is the best non-martial art activity that – can also translate well um, to martial arts that some of these fighters should think about doing in the offseason, rock climbing. <laughs> the uh, just anything that deals with agility drills with strength and conditioning. Plyometrics. Right? Because everything that you do in fighting, in wrestling, it all comes down to strength, speed, timing, focus, and determination, right? So all those, anything that you, you work your strength, like a power clean, not going too hot, heavy, um, fast twitch muscles, slow twitch muscles. You have to do it all. Mm. Anaerobic. Yeah. And uh, um, what do you think about uh, eye pokes? So they, they always talk about that. You got to go back to the pride gloves. It's crazy. I saw this photo of Bruce Lee in one of his first movies. He already made his own gloves and stuff like that. Just in your opinion, uh, I think so is going to be a uh, – the issue, uh, if you were in charge for a day, what would what would you try to create to do that? It's it's tough. Oh, it's a tough. Uh, it's still going. It's a tough uh, solution, right? I think the, I think it's on the refs. Hey, eye pokes happen, and right. um, again, if you worry about an eye poke, you're even get poked in your eye. So just <laughs> do what you do best. All right, All right, right. Um, let's see. So, what's the most valuable advice you can give to a parenting freshman? Or high school kid, which you are right now, you are right now, um, and I'm sure on the drives homes with your son, who's going into wrestling or going into martial arts, the mom comes up to you, says, "Kong, my kid really wants to wrestle. He's a freshman. You know, what advice do you have for him? What can I, uh, what what can I, I give to him? He's really into it. Support him. Don't be the soccer mom or the soccer dad and scream during the matches, and be encouraging." That's, yeah. that's simple. That's great, you guys. Yeah. Don't be too serious about it on them, right? Yeah. So it usually pushes them away. And have fun. Right. Right, right. All right. Now, the lonely, cold world of MMA, Mr. Lee, when it comes to MMA recruiting, this is one of your fighters. He's venturing mm -hmm. out. You see huge potential for him. What, what do you tell him uh, before he ventures out? Looking back on your journey, um, Hey, kid, this is what you got to look out for. This is what you should uh, also got to look out for, right? Sometimes they have crews with a lot of yes men around them, right, as they start to go up and get famous. What, what, what advice would you give to that kid listening right now who might be entering Dragon House the first time or something like that, right? Um, what would you tell him? Because I think that's valuable as hell, right? Read your contract. Have someone hell yeah. who's very knowledgeable about legal documents and don't try to do it all yourself make sure it's written in a way where it benefits you that's why everyone who's into martial arts or combative sports support the ollie act from boxing to mma uh, follow mma fa and that's key right there because ollie act will will help the so many just like the boxers are protected mm -hmm. they 
will help you as the combative martial artist. And guys like Don King. Yeah, that's right. Guys like Don. Well, you know, believe it or not, guys like Don King, they took a lot of the the, the money up from the fighters. Absolutely. But the fighters made up most of the money. Yep, absolutely. So you just be careful with the promoter. And you don't have to sign the first time, yeah. right? This yeah. is an open negotiation. You can't do much right now with UFC, but Mike Bellator is a mm -hmm. lot um, better because I know Scott Coker, he's – open for you to go and fight uh, Risen and other promotions. But when you're in a UFC contract, they own you. Right. So um, before you go to the UFC, uh, it's just a matter of time that all the act will be passed from boxing to MMA. Then, then when you become the best fighter and you want to fight the best fighter out in the world and that other fighter is signed with another promotion – Guess what? People will bid for the fight. Right. When they bid, bid for the fight, guess who makes all the money? Right. You do. So yeah. support Ali Act from boxing to MMA and follow MMA FA. So just watching Randy Corr in his Senate, Senate hearing right before we came right now, but uh, it's needed. It's needed. There's a reason why monopoly is illegal, but we don't have to get into all that garbage. Uh, another silly basic question. Favorite ounce gloves? Mr. Lee, just uh, for the, the kids out there listening, Super beginners uh, question: uh, Which which should they bigger the better? What well, what should they be practicing with those? Should In they... training, sixteen ounce gloves, and when you hit mitts, I like to go twelves. And in the week and a half, ten days before the fight, everything is done with MMA gloves at least once uh, once a day, so you get used to the to the weight of that. But still, keep on the the, the heavier gloves, and um, the week of the fight. Everything is the four ounce gloves. Interesting. And early in the week, you you hit the pads hard, and the rest of the week just just break a sweat. So valuable. Uh, Coach Sam and I were talking about this hand wraps. Hand wraps. Sometimes we gotta understand why we do what we do. Uh, but in his opinion, he's like after after a point of time, Roman. I just I stop wrapping my hands. I just put my gloves on, right? So he was trying to give me that advice to like. Don't worry about that. People looking at it like it's a Rubik's Cube, right? And they're figuring it out. Is it is it just one of those things culturally we, we do or is, is is there a science to it? What in your opinion would you recommend? You don't need wraps, do you need wraps? Well if you're or a heavy wrist, wrist support. No, if you're a heavy hitter, wear wraps because you know, the bags you know it, you know, the bag is unforgiven. Yep. If you hit the bag wrong and, and you screw your wrist up. Your, yeah. Keep protect your hands. Protect your money your money makers. There you go. There you go. Good. Uh, kicking dex dexterity. Quick tip for improving kicking dexterity. And I'm going to throw in your la latest Instagram post. I love that. That already answered my question. I'm like, shoot. They posted that. That already answered the question. But obviously, uh, we'll get to favorite kicking drill. But a uh, quick tip for improving your kicking dexterity. Somebody who might not be as flexible. Kick no, more? You no. Know, believe it or not, a lot of people say stretch. Right? Uh, yeah, you got to stretch. But it's, it's just not just stretching. You're stretching. When you warm up, Warm up with some light kicks you, and do all the kicks that once you break a sweat and your body's warmed up and you're loose, start doing those kicks that you want to try in sparring. Mm -hmm. Then when you start getting, getting them in sparring, guess what? They're going to they're gonna start working for you in the matches. Right. But you have to do it a lot in order to get it done. Favorite uh, hands down uh, kicking drill and why? I put for me paddles. But again, try doing – have spinning kicks on paddles when you're not warmed up, you're gonna pull your hamstring for sure. I, I, I like done it. Bear kicking drill, uh, and why? I hope it's not the 10 8 6 4 2 that Coach Spangler makes us do to the 2 4 6 8 10. <laughs> I hated those. Uh, anything, um, I'll throw your Instagram post up there, uh, again that you love doing, but you felt was your base core before you figured things out now, um, that you love doing a kicking drill, shadow boxing, shadow boxing with the kicks. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Nothing more realistic, right? Yep. Uh, you ever throw any any weights in there with shadow boxing? You think no, that no. doesn't make sense? Uh, throw what everything you got. With, with hands and then just getting the flow, keeping your hands up, looking in the mirror, see, uh, you know, throwing your last punch and stopping to see if your, your, your shoulders protecting your chin and then throwing the other one where uh, look at your technique when you kick in the mirror. I was asking, why mirror? Why Mr. Lee? You want to – why you want to – just look a like a lot of people throw this, right? Mm. And then see see this? It should be this because the shoulder should be up here to protect So you chin. can see yourself see where you're here. opening, yeah. right? So, so you don't make bad habits. Yeah, correct yourself. Mm. Through the mirror. Uh, we were just talking about this with uh, with Anthony. Thoughts on the evolution 
of a weight getting. I, I asked Marco this too, and that's where Marco told me that you know they're doing this whole underwater uh, thing to kind of understand weight cutting. I, I remember there was a death and stuff like that that happened in high school that kind of caused yeah. all of this, and now he's moved on to the CCS uh, board, which deals with a lot of these uh, decisions. Um, and then I don't know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Mike Dolce, but guys like Mike Dolce came in, they're kind of nutritionists who say instead of the traditional wrestlers weight cut, you know, he wrote three weeks to shred it on B12, good fat stuff that people were able to cut weight more. What are your thoughts on the evolution? Cause you've seen it from chew gum and spit to, <laughs> I've seen it all. Uh, what, what, are, what are your thoughts on, on the evolution? What, what should kids be doing? now if it's working do it right because right? bodies are so different if it's healthy do it i mean that's why that's why the high schools have implemented that water you know uh the whole water weight mass, test. yeah yeah fat uh measuring for for the kids so right. the kids are safe and the parents know that their kids is not killing themselves and now they they make it uh, the sport like for me when i cut weight the last two days of cutting weight was never fun. I hate. I hate it. Mm. I didn't want to be at school. I didn't want to do my homework because the, the weight cut was just awful. But right. now, you know, it's um, everyone's doing it right. And you know, some of the fighters they still kill themselves making the weight, even doing it right. And now you see some moving up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And doing well. That's interesting. Uh, good for uh, good fats versus carbs. And people talk about keto and this and that. So say so you do need some carbs though in the morning, oatmeal, whatever. What's your thoughts on and by good fast from avocado all that you guys can look into that. I, I, actually, I'm I'm lucky because my girlfriend's a nutritionist and uh, okay, it's, it's, all, it's all about carbs for me because okay. about performance, right? I mean, you know, keto because you want to look good, but like for me, it's all about performance. You can have great performance and look good at the same time. Just don't eat carbs later in the day. Uh, you 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 need your carbs in the morning, right? And uh, you know, less during lunch. You know? Right, right. I'm feeling this happen. Ninety nine year old grandpa. <laughs> he just yelled at me to go pick up some dog poop right now look at him look at that and then genetics play a role genetics like his right the reason he's 99 is they, they everything they grew they ate That's you right. know and That's now right. we're like hot cheetos and all that stuff so just knowing that and knowing that early especially for those young wrestlers listening out there i think would help Hyd hydration key totally random you posted this uh uh, Instagram chart, but we always think 64, 88 ounce glasses. But you posted this infographic before I even knew you, and it just showed weight, and it showed that wow, okay, at 64, I actually needed minimum 80, 80 ounces. Yep. I told Coach Spengler about that. Smash taking the piss, and he's like, "How do you know that, Roman? Where'd you hear that?" I'm like, "Actually, it was Mr. Lee's Instagram uh, that he he posted uh, that." Sounds crazy, but as I played basketball in college. On days that I did such a good job of hydrating the night before and doing those little things, I literally felt like I had an edge, right? And I feel when two people are really matched up, they say it becomes a battle of nutrition. That's it. Who did the little stuff? Who drank the other amount of stuff? Um, what do you think about hydration? It's huge. It, it, it's, I think it's a... Uh, the night before is key. The, the well, day of. Not just the night before, right? But because if, if you're not doing it throughout your whole training camp mm -hmm. or your training season and you're not hydrating right, you're going to have up and up and down performances, right? Then you'll, you'll never be consistent. Mm -hmm. But if you look at all the guys that are top level, like say even basketball, LeBron James, why do you think he's so con consistent? He's hydrated right. He mm -hmm. eats right. He sleeps right. He gets therapy. I mean – it's a science, and you just gotta follow those steps. Be consistent with everything, and your performance throughout the whole season will be consistent. Mm -hmm. Electrolytes night before, water day of, or all these kids the crazy sports drinks and Gatorade. But there's nothing better than water. Why don't you say water? Water, water beats all. Awesome. I think this is super, super great stuff. Um, okay, everybody's gonna want to know uh, this. Um, you're at your peak right you got the handsome slick haircut uh you woke up in the morning it's really quick for those uh daily routine uh let's say the meet is uh tomorrow uh you just woke up uh try try to get as detailed as possible you wake up you're brushing your teeth what's the first thing what's going in the blender what do you what do you what do you drink what's what's the 
for me, well, I don't have meat next week, but I, I keep it very consistent. I'll, I'll wake up, I'll, I'll make myself uh, a water, a little bit of almond milk just for the flavor, okay. and then a uh, chocolate uh, uh, protein uh, mix from Ancient Nutrition, uh, and then uh, some uh, some frozen pineapple mm. for the extra sugars and the carbs, mm. and I blend it up. And it, that's my shake, and then I'm ready to go. Awesome, awesome. Um, let's talk about what do you see? What's a common trait you see of you know kids that kind of go the wrong way or uh, wasted talent? I'm sure from far away, you know, there was some guys from San Jose High. You're just like, God, if that guy knew he was so talented. But a lot of time, they say it might be the environment at home, right? Things happen. Um, what, what what are the most common traits you see of sometimes of kids that go the wrong way and not to be negative but it's a way to try to improve that um, circle around them is it um, kind of a kind of a Debbie Downer question but uh, I'm sure there were some guys that were just like God he's so talented what a waste of talent you know like, you know I think it starts from the top right one parenting. If, if you don't have that support, it's going to be a lot easier to go the wrong way. Um, but nowadays, like I said, you have Google. You get on there and say if you want to do something and you want to be the best at something or just try something out, you can Google it. Uh, just spend the time positively. Know that if you're hanging out with the, the wrong crowd, you're going to end up doing the wrong thing. Mm. And if you're doing things for yourself and if, if it's positive and it's productive – continue to do that and when you come into this world you come in alone when you leave you're gonna leave alone it's what you leave when you're here yep so make the best of it and every day um, tomorrow's not promised so just remember that and try to help like be that change that you want to see in the world and you be that light that you want to you know shine bright in the world you know i think that's that's how you gotta live by get yourself a good, a strong mindset, and and believing in the Lord, and and just just live life. I love it. That's great stuff. We're gonna go right into the acting and rap, but but I want to get your thoughts on setting personal goals. Like you just said, Google it. Uh, any any thoughts on you know people say whatever the hell it is what we want to do, but physically write it down. And there's so many people out there who don't even. Uh, write it down or don't even think about okay well what the hell is the goal i want to be a state champion wrestler i want to be a state champion wrestler. write that down and then be realistic with yourself of, okay what is it what is it going to take right um were you growing up you know in your secrecy were you setting any personal goals and any advice to kids um how to set it right i i think you've got to have a quantitative number in the goal right be specific um what what are, what are your thoughts on that? I think what you just said about writing it down, I did write down my goals. But I'm going to take it another level for you guys. Mm -hmm. You write it down and you write three things you're going to do to make that happen. All right. Great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, let's go right into life after fighting. For some, I think that's so important. All these NFL players out there that you always hear about, they immediately go broke or they don't plan for the future or they don't even think about what they're going to do after um you know playing pro football you've done some amazing things already sir right proud of you as well with that so many titles i went to, into the badlands i can go for days i watched savage dog last night i was uh telling them um first off got into that also a very lonely world um what was the hardest thing that surprised you that about acting uh, as you made your way through, right, uh, all the trailers parked next to each other, right, all the script reading. What was like? I didn't know. I didn't know this. This title. It's probably some egos for sure. <laughs> uh, there's egos there everywhere, right? right? Uh, there's 100%. ego in fighting and wrestling. There's ego in business. There's ego in you know corner stores. <laughs> right, right. You can't escape ego, right? It's just the people who can check their ego, right? And um, like, like for me, when I went into acting, You're shooting I, a film, yeah, I should have specified. It it, 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 all comes down to when you're a martial artist, you're a wrestler. You have that discipline. It's easy because you've endured worse. Mm. And going on 
doing long hours of shooting and being at your best is because what you set yourself, what you want to achieve out of the shoot or mm -hmm. your character or whatever you're doing in life, you just got to make sure you give everything your best. Mm -hmm. And there's then, a, there's an off the mat right there. Principle. Then then you can't look back and say oh, I could have done something. Mm -hmm. Um. Any new uh, gigs or projects you're working on that you're allowed to uh, talk about? You might be able to tell us about uh, to look for. I know you've been writing a lot, which is which I is got two, but uh, you're gonna have to stay tuned. Stay and tuned follow to find my, out uh, uh, social media, and you'll you'll find out. Um, any uh, gyms you want to give a, a shout out to that you've been um, a part of? I know you got your own private one. Uh, Smash, Smash gyms. Um, Multiple locations in the Bay Area uh, has it all as a one-shop stop. You know, it's got wrestling, it's got kickboxing, it's got CrossFit, it's got it's got it all. Yep, we've had Rudy on. Check out Rudy Sanchez. Great episode with him as well, and the whole team. A uh, huge network um, of them. Coach Sam teaches classes uh, too. Uh, I remember we were talking about how is the script the real gold in your um, opinion, I've sent over the Rocky story and a lot of people are sort of familiar with that. They were trying to pay him to not act in his own uh, movie. I know you've been working on some writing things. Uh, oh, the Napoleon Dynamite yeah. right? example uh, that you gave. Uh, for any people who are not in martial arts but are also uh, trying to do the same things that you're doing now, are there uh, writers any advice to them? Do you believe the script is the, the real gold? out there there's or, there's a lot of element that goes into a script of course the script's got to be solid character driven um the hook in the beginning the character building in the middle and then the payoff at the end but uh it all comes down to how you cast it and who's directing it and the talent you have on it and the team that you have producing it and working on on the set it all comes down to it. everything's got to gel together absolutely i think that's an amazing Place to end it. Uh, super indebted. He rarely does this. Feels super happy, super grateful to have you on, Mr. Conley. Thank you so much. Oh, one more. Yes. I'm about to sign a deal. I got this new bag coming out. It's going to be part of my company too, but it's a partnership. And uh, I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet, but this bag is the bag that you want because you can rip any punches you want on it and it'll hold up. It has different, you know angles that you can punch right it's gonna be good stay tuned for that look stay out tuned. for that appreciate it mr lee signing off mr kung lee two essj natives uh you guys take care out there hope you guys enjoyed this one cheers